Okay, so in this section we're looking at Gantt charts, so section number four. Very similar to what we did in section number three, should be hopefully a bit shorter than the last one because you should know now how to create um, a screenshot, for example, and how you can paste in there. So I don't want to show that element anymore. First things first, you need to understand what a Gantt chart is, so do your research. Um, if you're not in my lesson, uh, my class, then all you need to do is check the section in the book. You can go online. There's tons of resources there. Uh, I am going to share this folder to my class. I've got two templates they're going to be using, and there's a video as well. So I'm going to watch the video very shortly. Again, not going to take any credit for this video. It's on YouTube. You can check it out on online. Uh, it's called Gantt Chart Simplified Project Management Training it's by this company. And it's really, really good. I'm going to forward the video purely because it starts to talk about Gantt charts from this uh, point onwards. So one minute, 54 seconds in. Um, the video quality, so the sound quality may not be the best because it's a recording of a recording. But as I said, I'm going to share the actual video. If you have access to it, just skip forward to that moment. And what you'll understand, boys and girls, is a Gantt chart is similar to the PERT, PERT uh, uh, chart or diagram. It's a method of organizing and visualizing what needs to be done by when. So it's another way of organizing that task list that you created in section number two. So this task list here is just a list, isn't it? It's how you can put that list into, into some kind of visual representation of what needs to be done when. It's a method of organizing your project. So, so look at the Gantt chart video here. Let's have a little watch through this. I'm not going to watch the entire thing, just near the end. And this is going to show you a little example. And then after that, I'm going to show you some templates that I've uh, found online that I'm going to share with my classes uh, that I think are you know, really, really good. And you're going to use them uh, for this mock. So here we go. Let's look and see what a Gantt chart looks like. Again, it's a bar chart. So it lists the activity ID numbers, the activity names, their durations, their planned start date and finish date. And on this Gantt chart, it shows the progress along the way. So there are pluses and minuses about Gantt charts. So the pluses are a Gantt chart is really useful for progress tracking and progress reporting, again, with the team members doing those activities. It's not so great for planning and organizing for you as a project manager because there are no lines and no interdependencies. So ideally, if you can use a project management online software tool to help you do this, there are some alternatives. You can use Excel or some things called smart sheets that help you do this. It takes a little bit more time and effort for you as a project manager, but still can be done. So if you need a tool that can help you simplify your Gantt charts, then sign up for our software now at projectmanager.com. So we're going to stop there. As I said, um, this um, video is online. Um, I'm going to show you the templates I've got. I've got two versions, and you're more than welcome to use either one if you're in my class. I don't mind which one you use. Um, some of you might find the first the first one easier to understand, uh, or some of you might find version two easier to understand. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, and you can do this manually as well, to be fair. But I find this, this these templates are pretty easy to use. Um, I'm just going to cross this off for a second and show you. So on the left hand side, you basically put so this one's a little bit more. Well, it looks a bit more confusing, but it's not really. It's by a company called Team Gantt, I believe it is. Um, but we don't have to worry about that because the whole point is we want to show this here. So we've got a table, and the information you put here goes over here. Okay, and we've got a basic version here as well. So this is the basic version. And there's a manual chart, okay? So let's look at the basic one for now. Yeah, let's look at the basic one for now. And what you'll understand is basically that is the task list. You know the list of tasks that we have uh, that we created in, in, in section two. Uh, you put it in here and it should be in order. And you're going to say the start date for each thing that you said you're going to do. So in this example, we've got right landing page copy. That'll be starting on this date and it should finish on this date. Okay? And... You say how many days it'll take to complete it, and you say who's going to complete it. For you, it'll be easy because you don't need to say who this doesn't need to exist. So, you know, we can leave this blank to be fair. In fact, uh, we're going to delete all this for now. There we go, done. And then you say the next task when is that going to be started? When is that going to finish? And that's going to start on what day? Well, think about it. If this is um, a four day task, um, 
I'm not sure why it says three there. Let's say three there, but it will be the third or fourth day, basically. Um, and again, you say the duration, how many days. So you can see the next one is uh, a continue on from that. So the one after that starts on the day that finishes, and it's going to finish on that day um, because it's going to take six days to complete. Uh, the percentage you just basically fill it in to say how you know how many have been completed by when. Um, but I, I won't worry about the percentages because I don't think you need to do that uh, from what I remember. All you need to worry about is what, when is it going to start, when is it going to finish, and how long is going to last. And when you do this, it should then fill out the information from here onto this bar chart here and what the what this does is it shows you if there's any overlapping the overlapping means uh, that while this is finishing off you're starting this one yeah while this one is finishing off you're starting this one so uh, there you go that makes sense now so basically you can see even though it's a four day task this one's starting on the third day yeah so it's not going to be four and four making it eight it's actually going to be four this one starts a day earlier so therefore it's going to be four, five, six, seven, seven days. Makes sense, yeah, for those two tasks. And then by the, uh, what's that, 11th day, you're already at the end of the third task, but you're also halfway through the fourth task. So, and also not only that, if you look down a little bit more, by the time you get to this point here, you've also done another task down here. So there'll be some multitasking involved. If you put the dates in here properly, because you'll see some things will happen before and after other things. So it's not just all happening linear yeah it's not in a linear format the what the, what the word basic means is where you do one thing the next one the next one the next one and you're waiting for one thing to finish before you go on to that yes don't get me wrong there'll be some activities you cannot start until uh, something else has been done but there will be others that you can do in the meantime so you can see even though here we've got a task that starts on the 22nd of January, uh, and this has got the American format where they put the month in before the, uh, the the date, which is fine. Um, here, you've got something that starts on the 15th, right? So you can have multitasking involved. In this one here, you basically manually type in, uh, putting the colors in. So now some of you might think this is a little bit complicated, but you do need to understand it before you start using it. I'm gonna show you the other one as an example. And I think the other one is the easier one. Let's have a look, I'm not sure. But really, it's down to personal preference, really. Um, but as the video expl explained, as long as you have a uh, an outline of the list, which you already have from section two, you should have from section two. Um, if you haven't, go back to it. Here's another one as well. So you put the tasks here. And you see it's slightly different. Responsible is the person responsible for it. But for you, because it's your project, that'll be all you anyway. The start date and the end date, how many days each one will take and whether this has been completed or not. So this here, you basically type in completed, overdue or in progress as you go along. So this is, you don't do this at the beginning. This is like your, this is as you're going through with it. So you can delete all these and you basically say if you've completed it, yes or no. Yeah. But really at the beginning, all you need to do is say what, when will you start, when you hope to finish. And that will be easy if you do the days first, because then you can add the days. Yeah. So if you start in a second, Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, 2nd of uh, uh, November there, sorry, September there, we finished on the 3rd. Um, and then it should automatically then go on to here. So let me just change this to see if it does. Actually, does this do automatically? Let's put 2 here. Yeah, so it adds it here, can you see? It's gone up. So if I put down 5 here, it automatically increases it here. So you can then change that as well, can't you? Yeah, so add 5 uh, after the 2, so that'll be the 7th. So make sure you do that as well. Okay, so that's all you need to do. You need to put your list of tasks and think about how some of these could be starting uh, in between other tasks and how others will have to rely upon something else to be finished and put the start time and end, uh, uh, end time with the days in between here. And then the graph should come up here. And what you need to do is then obviously you can zoom out Print screen what you need. So let me show you very quickly. Print screen, which is up here at the top right hand side of your keyboard, if, depending on what's a laptop or, key, or computer you're using. And you go back to here and you paste it in. And just remember that you're not getting everything in. You just want the table and the chart. So this is not finished yet. You will have to do it properly. So you basically drag this down um, and just copy what you need basically in here. Like so. 
okay and that's all you need simple and you can make this a little bit larger so you can see it better and that's it yeah so obviously i haven't finished off you do need to so use section two with your your uh, task list fill that in when are you hoping to start how many days will it take for each item then calculate the days it will finish and then the chart should automatically up, uh, update itself that's what you need for this section hopefully that uh, is easy to understand and helps you